All right, so you've seen the trailer for this one a lot. <laughs> so the movie's finally out. So Bullet Train's directed by David Leitch. It stars Brad Pitt. Yes, it does. But also a lot of other actors comprising a lot of other characters that are very fun and colorful, otherwise murderous characters. They're hitmen or otherwise people who deal in that kind of a world. They've all come together on this bullet train. And for the next two hours, they're clashing, scheming, or otherwise navigating through the tangled web that is their lives and their careers. And we're all along for the ride. Simple synopsis, yes, but it's as accurate as it needs to be. And judging from the trailer, if I'm just assessing what the trailer looked like, the trailer looks like it's John Wick meets Murder on the Orient Express <laughs> with the director of Deadpool 2. That's not really the movie. The action's in it, absolutely. Is it a stylistic movie? Without a doubt. Is the action fun and satisfying as it's going down? Absolutely it is. But I felt like the core of the movie was all these characters traversing the tangled web that is the plot and trying to manipulate and scheme each other to do so. And I will say, I really loved the characters in the movie because none of the characters really felt like the other characters. It's not like you have tough Hitman A and tough Hitman B and they're kind of interchangeable. No, the actress, director, the movie, it all does a good job at making the characters feel unique and distinct. I always like that. Reminds me of a good JRPG where you're like, I have a nice amount of characters and none of them feel like the other ones. They're unique. It's how a movie like this should feel. It's shocking how many movies don't pull that off. And as much as Brad Pitt crushes it, it's easy to say that he's a standout because he is the main character. But he does do a great job in the movie. I want to give some special love to Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Just a couple of guys with three names making YouTubers get tongue-tied. They were the standouts in the movie. I dare to say when I was having the most fun in here, it was when they were bantering. Their banter and their chemistry, it is electric. In fact, if there's a standalone movie with those two, I'd totally be down. I genuinely think that there's a standalone spin-off film with those two that I would totally watch. Also, I appreciate the fact this movie does, it keeps you guessing, you know? It's not like one of those movies like, Pff, I knew where it was going in act one. However, flip side of that enjoyable coin, it's a convoluted plot. Is it convoluted and overly padded? Sometimes. The movie has a style to it too. Sometimes is it overly stylistic? Like in a way that you feel like you're, you're burning the clock? Sometimes. This movie kind of does throw back to this block of time that I feel like was more brief than some of us remember. 2004 to 2006? It's like those action crime movies that were super stylistic, maybe over the top, but it was just kind of, it was the point. Like someone was in high school when they saw Pulp Fiction or Snatch and they were like, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna go crazy. Definitely has a Smoke and Aces vibe when I was watching the movie. I was like, this kind of reminds me of Smoke and Aces. Differences, Smoke and Aces, those those movies I'm talking about from that time, they had that grit, that late 90s to mid 2000s grit. This movie doesn't have that. <laughs> There's no mistake. It's like, if you watch this movie, it's like, yeah, that was filmed in 2022 for sure. Regardless, there was something that was Smoke and Aces <laughs> meets the director of Deadpool 2. There was a point in the movie where I was like, if the movie ended, not necessarily ended at this point, but ended at this time, it would have been perfect. At the 90 minute mark and the movie looked like it was wrapping up. I was like, oh, a movie with perfect timing. Thank, wow, we have another half an hour. Oh, it's not wrapping up, okay. Granted, the last half hour of this movie is batshit. It's nuts, it's a lot of fun. It leaves the audience with that action. So I feel like that's where people are coming out of the movie theater like, whoa, crazy action. But I enjoyed the shit out of that. That, that was fun. Guys, in the end, Bullet Train, it's not like, not the movie of the year. I, I wanted this to be on my top 10. What can I say? I'm a man of wants. Regardless, I felt the movie was a fun time. It had colorful characters. It kept you guessing when the fights went down. Those were fun. But as you've been listening to this whole video and you didn't skip to the rating, because I know you totally didn't do that. I guess you didn't if you're listening to this part. Thank you. Just know you. If you want to see a movie that's a throwback or a love letter to those mid-2000s stylized crime action movies, this is that. And I walked out of this movie having a fun time. No alcohol required. Funny, I feel like I should use the matinee price, Marcus. Good time, no alcohol required. I feel like it's it's not what it always was before. Now I'm saying pay these gas prices to get to the movie theater, then pay movie theater prices for the ticket. You gotta really want it now, but... I just a thought, but I digress. There's a bullet train. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. I want to give some special love to Brian Tyree Henry and Ailey. I want to give some special love to Brian Tyree Henry and Ailey. Blah. I want to give some special love to Brian Tyree. That was a different name. I want to give some special love to Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson. I want to give some special love to Brian. <laughs> I want to give some special love to Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson. That's as good as it's getting.